first time we're hearing about clashes between top military brass and the White House in the final days of the war in Afghanistan, retired generals Mark Milley and Kenneth McKenzie exposing for the first time the tension they had with the Biden administration during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now, two of those major differences include the military advising the Biden administration, telling the White House to keep at least 2,500 service members in Afghanistan to maintain stability. They were also concerned that the State Department was not moving fast enough to get that evacuation going. I would have begun sooner. Would have begun sooner. That's probably the principal thing I would have done. I would have begun much sooner than when we actually did. And I would have, same, I, I would have brought the, the embassy and the State Department out with the military by the middle of July. That, that, that is what, if there was one thing, a do-over, you don't get do-overs in this stuff, but if there was a do-over, that would be it. Yeah, there were some big moments in that testimony yesterday. We're joined now by retired Admiral James Stavridis, who spent more than 30 years in the U.S. Navy and was NATO Supreme Allied Commander of Europe from 2009 to 2013. He's also the author of a brand new novel called 2054, which is available now. Uh, Admiral, an honor to have you on the show this morning. Great to be on with you, Marky. For starters, I just wanted to begin with the fact that, you know, this is not the first time we've heard from General Milley or General McKenzie about what went wrong during the Afghanistan pullout. What stood out the most to you from yesterday's testimony? I think the two generals did exactly what they are supposed to do, which is to tell the truth. And the idea is that we can learn from our mistakes. Um, and by the way, I commanded this mission. This was a NATO mission from 2009 to 2013. At the time, I had 150,000 troops, both U.S. and allied, under my command there. So by the time this debacle occurs, we're down to really just a few thousand troops. And what really stood out for me, and I agree with them entirely, why didn't we keep at least 2,500 troops there, maintain the footprint at Bagram Air Force Base, draw back within that, uh, that perimeter? I think uh, it could have been very different and better. As my good friend Mark Milley said, you don't get do-overs in this business. But if we had one, it would be pull out earlier, hold on to Bagram longer. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you specifically about that disconnect there. I mean, General Milley, General McKenzie giving the same answer when asked what they do differently if they had the chance to plan this withdrawal all over again, which obviously is not a reality that exists. Uh, the generals claim it was up to the State Department and not the Pentagon to order that withdrawal. Based on your experience, sir, I mean, why were the State Department and the Pentagon not on the same page over this? Uh, again, this is a, a very surprising aspect to this. I think they had differences of opinion about what the impact would be on the already shaky Afghan government of President Ashraf Ghani. I think state was concerned. Any sign of a pullout early would have caused an earlier collapse. I think from a military perspective, and I say this again as a former commander of this mission, mm -hmm. uh, we needed to override that view. We needed to convince our fellow uh, security practitioners over at State Department that we need to get going because lives are at risk, and we saw the tragic results. Mm -hmm. And with tens of thousands of U.S. troops deployed all over the world, I mean, what needs to be implemented now and what has to change to prevent something like this from happening again in the future? Um, the first point is the one you've already made, Marky, which is better interagency cooperation. And it's not just state and defense. It goes back to Homeland Security, Department of Justice. We have many, many different agencies of government focused on security. We need better interagency work. That's really the job of the National Security Council staff under the president. And then secondly, we need to train and exercise to practice, if you will, uh, scenarios like this. And frankly, the extraction you're watching now could be occurring in Haiti in a matter of days yeah. or weeks. And just a few seconds left with you, sir, while I still have you. Did yesterday's testimony offer any more clarity to the American people, to lawmakers, especially those families, as to who, you know, should be held accountable here? I think the hearing did, in fact, uh, shine a light on a, on a dark chapter. And frankly, it needed to. 
Whether there is follow-on accountability or not remains to be seen. But certainly this was not the finest hour for the U.S. military, the State Department, uh, or the White House itself. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.